Wouldn't you like to be able to say that you have the tools and the knowledge to catch the biggest bass in the lake? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. Hi there, welcome to the Bass Fishing Life. I'm your host, Steve Rogers. Before we get into the video, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and punch that notification bell. We release videos three times a week on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays all year long. Thank you so much. Well, I don't know about you, but every time I go out on the water, I have that little, little hope that I'm going to catch an absolute giant. And most of the time, you go out there, you catch two pounders, three pounders, whatever, it's awesome, it's a great time. But you really wanna catch that, that giant fish, what is known as the biggest fish in the lake. Well, we're gonna talk about some things today that I've learned over 20 plus years and thousands of hours on the water, not only myself, but fishing with some of the best bass anglers in the industry. And I'm gonna go over some of the things that I've picked up and learned that I think can help you catch the biggest bass in the lake. Now the first thing, and then it's kind of a common sense uh, piece of information that we need to have when we talk about catching the biggest bass in the lake, remember the biggest bass for that particular lake. If the body of water you're fishing has an average of two pound fish and the biggest bass is four and a half pounds, that's gonna be the biggest bass in that lake. Maybe where you live in Southern California, the biggest bass could be 20 plus pounds. It all depends what part of the country you're in, the fishing pressure on that lake, the forage that's available, the health of the ecosystem, all that type of stuff. But what I wanna tell you is give you the tools so you can go and get the biggest fish in that particular lake, whatever it may be. So that's what we're gonna talk about specifically in this video. Now, the first thing that I want to go over is as I sit back and reflect on my bass fishing career when I think about the real toads, the monsters that I have caught, they all, every one of them, have one thing in common. And you may be asking, what is it? Is it a certain lure? Is it a certain time of year? Nope, it's none of those. I've caught monster bass through all times of the year. The one common denominator is I was 100% relaxed, not even hardly paying attention to what exactly was going on. And let me give you some examples so it doesn't sound like I'm a, a complete you know, goof out there on the water. Some of the biggest fish that I have caught have been when I'm picking out a backlash in a reel and I've got my bait sitting out there. When I'm engrossed in a conversation with a friend that's out fishing with me and I'm just fishing very relaxed and slow. Or maybe it is a situation where it's starting to get towards the end of the day and I'm thinking about something else, I'm tired, and I'm leaving that bait sit out there a little bit longer or not move it as much as I would have maybe first thing in the morning. So what is that common denominator? In all those situations, I'm not overworking the bait. I'm not doing too much to that lure. I'll never forget the first real big fish that I caught on Muskegon Lake in Michigan as I was picking out a backlash and I had a tube uh, jig out there and I threw it out on a rocky little point in this shipping canal, shipping area, and was picking that thing, picking that thing, picking that thing. And then I got it all set and I was reeling it down and all of a sudden my line was swimming off and I pulled that thing in and it was about a five pound largemouth, one of the first larger fish that I had caught. And I was like, holy cow. Now this was many, many, many years ago, but that tube was just sitting on there on the bottom doing nothing. You know, there, there was some natural current coming through this because the river dumps into a, an open lake, this Bay Area before it goes into Lake Michigan, but I wasn't doing anything. So that's the first thing that we need to do if you want to target big, big fish is don't put too much action in that lure. 
fish slower than you normally would. I cannot emphasize that enough. It really helps let that bait soak. The second thing that we need to think about when trying to get the biggest bass in the lake is isolated cover. The biggest bass out there, they are more dominant fish. They've been around, they've seen stuff, they've got good instincts clearly to survive and get to that point. They don't like a lot of competition. And what I mean by competition is other fish competing with them for a food source. Let me give you a perfect example. I'm thinking about this, it still makes me sick to this day. I was fishing a Bassmaster open out of Buffalo, New York. And this was one of our practice days and I had the boat running across the lake. It was glass calm, smooth, bright sunshine. Just a horrible day for fishing and I was going out to what was a fairly popular reef. And I was shooting across the lake in my boat and on the dash of my bass boat I had a flasher. Okay, so I had a graph but also a flasher. And the interesting thing about the flashers are is they're immediately responsive. They, they adjust even when I was running 60 miles per hour or whatever it was. That flasher is giving me pretty accurate readings unlike a graph that has to display all the way across. And I'm running across Lake Erie on that eastern side, that buffalo side, and all of a sudden my flasher goes foom foom, just like that. I'm like, whoa, 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 what was that? There's nothing on any of my charts, my lake charts, maps or anything. So I pull down the throttle, back that boat down, and go back around and start idling back and forth until I find it. And I find a rock pile that is about the size of a car okay it's not real big it took me about 25 30 minutes of going back and forth to really locate it and then mark a waypoint on my graph my fish finder but it wasn't on any maps whatsoever i mean this was such a small insignificant piece of cover that it wasn't marked anywhere i just happened by total luck run across it with my flasher and I saw it. So I was fishing a tube jig. Kind of interesting that so far I've talked twice about a tube. So I took that tube and I threw it out there and is I don't remember, 20, 25, 30 foot of water. And it sinks down and I'm not really expecting a whole lot. Now I'm just sitting there. I'm not really doing anything to that tube. I'm just literally holding it there. And all of a sudden I feel the smallest thump. I set the hook and right away my rod just bends over. I'm thinking, whoa, man, this is a good one. I start thinking, ah, do I have a drum sheep's head, you know, something like that. And then all of a sudden, whoo, the fish kind of comes up and does this towards the surface of Lake Erie. And I can see that it is a smallmouth and my heart just absolutely stops. I'm like, holy cow. And I go ahead and pull it into the boat and I put it on this measuring board, this bump board that I've carried around for, you know, two decades. That's smallmouth, okay? I did like you're supposed to, close the mouth, you know, put it up here on the end, took the tail and pulled the tail down. The tail of that smallmouth completely hung off of this bump board. That's the 22 inch mark right there. Completely hung off the end of this bump board, I could not believe it. And of course, this was a day and age where you didn't have the smartphones, the camera phones. I was by myself because I was fishing for practice and I was out in the middle of the lake, miles and miles away from anything, shoreline, you know, whatever. I take this fish, no pictures. So maybe you believe me, maybe you don't. No pictures, and I go ahead and release it back to that rock pile because I'm practicing for a tournament. I thought, you know what? This rock pile is so isolated, that fish, there's a good chance, will be here the next day. And the next day was the first day of the tournament. So I put that fish back, and I thought, wow, what a, I'm going to fish that rock pile and hopefully catch that thing. Well, the next day, the weather just exploded and we could hardly get out on the lake whatsoever. Most people were fishing the harbors and rivers right there close. I was never able to get back out there. And here's the part that really kind of makes me ill and gives me this, ugh, just I think about it all these years later. I looked up New York State record. As of right now, today, the New York State record is just a 
touch over eight pounds with a fish that was caught up in the St. Lawrence River. I can't say for 100% sure, but I wanna say I may have had a fish that challenged for the state record. I should have put that thing in a live well, gone to a certified scale, but that's hindsight, it's 2020. But my point is, it was an isolated piece of cover. That fish had probably very little competition down there. It wasn't some massively huge reef. That fish was king of the hill out there on its own. When you see an isolated stump away from everything else, when you see an isolated patch of weeds that is off on its own away from a bigger weed bed, key in and target those isolated areas, those spots like that tend to have larger fish than the others. One, because they, they own that spot. That's their spot and there's less competition for food in that particular area. And you don't get big like that when you're having to compete with others for food all the time unless the forage base is just out of this world amazing. So first tip to catch the biggest bass in the lake is don't overwork the lure. Let that thing soak. Two, look for isolated pieces of cover. The third thing I want to talk about is what I call the potato chip theory. Now think about if you're in your recliner in your living room and you're actually going to put forth the energy to get up, go to the kitchen and get a snack. You open up that potato chip bag. Are you only going to grab one single chip and take it back to your chair? Or are you more likely to either fill a bowl up or bring that entire bag back with you? Now think about that. Big bass get big because they bring in more calories than they expel or burn. So here's the potato chip theory, make the meal worth it. We've all heard a billion times that big baits catch big bass, and then yes, we know that small finesse baits can catch big bass as well, but if you wanna put the odds in your favor of getting the biggest bass in the lake, think of the potato chip theory. I like to go large with large baits in that particular situation. Another quick story, I was fishing with Ray Scott, the founder of BASS, down on his home lake, Presidential Lake. We were filming a television episode down there, and we were catching a lot of threes and fours and fives, and he told me, he goes, Steve, I want to catch a big one, and he pulled out a lipless crankbait. That thing was like a hubcap. I didn't even know they were lipless crankbaits that big. He's throwing it out there. We're in a fiberglass boat, mind you, not aluminum. That thing is vibrating so much as it's coming back to the boat. I can feel it standing in the deck on a fiberglass boat. I mean, it was just chucka, 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 chucka. And guess what? He caught the biggest fish of the day. Supports the potato chip theory. The fourth thing that you really need to consider if you want to catch the biggest bass in the lake is to make sure that you've got a rod that has good, good, good sensitivity. And here's why. Most of the bass that we catch, so if here's the lure, most of the bass that we catch do not just come vroom, firing out of everywhere and just slam it and just you know rip your arms off. Most of the biggest bites are almost imperceptible, like that huge smallmouth that I caught when I was fishing Lake Erie. And if you've ever seen underwater footage of a bass, a largemouth or smallmouth feeding, it's because they flare those gills and create this suction, this vacuum effect, and just pulls that lure in. So when you feel the thump on that line, you're feeling that lure getting pulled into their mouth. The fish is not going to the lure and thumping it. They are most of the time stationary or moving very, very little and pull the lure to it. If you do not have a rod that has good sensitivity, they're going to pull that thing in and spit that lure out. You may not even know that they were there. Those are my four tips to help you catch the biggest bass in your lake, whatever the size of that fish may be. Number one, let that bait soak. Don't give it too much action. So critically important. Two, make sure that you target isolated cover. Find that alone spot, that isolated spot where that fish is king of the hill. 
three, don't forget the potato chip theory. I like to use big baits when targeting big bass. And four, make sure the rod that you are using has enough sensitivity to it that you can feel that slightest inhale when that great big fish takes that lure. I hope that these four things help you out, make you think about big bass a little bit differently. Hey, and don't forget to go out and encourage someone today. You never know what a difference you're going to make in their life for the bass fishing life. I'm your host, Steve Rogers.